Hello everybody, welcome back to Barrel's Garage. Whew, I am wore out. <laughs> Today just beat me up. Anyway, I did get home and I got a little bit done on the Mercury here. I got the oil changed in it. <laughs> That's about all I got done to it. But I did get something. I did notice uh, the other day, I was kind of going through watching other channels and uh, uh, some guys are uh, they're thinking about a Ford for their first project. Well, I'll kind of show you uh, what I look for in a Ford for a project. And it starts with this Mercury because it's a prime example. Now you notice in my last videos uh, on the Fairlane build here, what did I go looking for? I went and looked for an untouched, unmolested 460 to start with. And that's exactly what I was looking for in this Mercury is a Ford that nobody has touched, changed, manipulated, or anything. They just drove it. In my opinion, those are the best Fords to start with. Now you heard before, when I was talking about, you know, Fords, they're the toughest of the bunch. Why? Because they're so particular on their parts. Unlike the Chevy, on a Ford, every engine family is its own category and parts very rarely interchange with anything. Uh, transmissions don't bolt up from engine family to engine family. Uh, when I'm talking engine families, you know, that's FEs, uh, Windsors, Clevelands, um, Cleveland Modifieds, uh, 385s, uh, that's the big modern uh, big block Fords the 429, 460s. Uh, Fords get complicated. And it's what separates them from all the other brands. Uh, and in my opinion, like I said, they, it makes them the hardest or the most challenging of all the other makes to hot rod and have fun with. It happens to be why I like them. Uh, Chevys are very easy. Chevys are very affordable. You can do pretty much anything you want to do to a Chevy and it's probably already been done and there's a reason for that. They're just, they're the easiest of the bunch to do. Now, again, I get back to a lot of guys are looking to get into this and uh, they want to choose a Ford because, yeah, you know, Fords are cool. <laughs> this is where heart rodding started, right? It was with the 32 Ford Deuce Coupe with a uh, flathead V8 in them. So, what do you look for? Like I said, an unmolested one. Something that nobody's messed with yet. Why? Because anything you change to change on it, you know what you changed. So you know what you can change back if it doesn't work. <laughs> and you don't run into the mismatch of parts. Uh, again, on other brands, it's uh, it's very forgiving. On a Ford, it's not. Uh, Fords, you got to know your stuff. So that's what I look for in a Ford. Uh, on all honesty, when this car came up, what I seen in it was five hundred dollars for a running three ninety, possibly a four twenty eight. That's what I seen when I looked at this car because I know that's the engine that comes in them. And I know the guy that uh, had this collection and he, uh, he took care of his stuff. So I knew it was a good deal, uh, especially for the price, you know. So if you're looking to get into a Ford on this, on this uh, hobby, try to find one that nobody's touched yet. That's the best best suggestion I can have for you and when you dive into it for the first time study everything there is to study about that engine family because it's going to change once you go to the next one and you'll have to learn it all over again uh, take for instance on this one it's a 390 FE block study the 390 go into depth on it find out what you can and can't do with a 390 uh, if it was a 428, I would do the same thing. Dive in, study the 428, see what it'll handle, see what you can do, see what other people have done to them 
within your realistic budget. Now, that's the hard part with Ford. Fords are expensive. Uh, it's because of that. The parts don't interchange. The, the aftermarket on a Ford, there's so many parts that they cost more because they can't produce that many parts. Unlike a Chevy, you know, they make one distributor, boom, if it's a big block, small block, you know, they only have to make one to make it work across the board. With a Ford, they can only make one for that engine family, then they gotta make another one for the in next engine family, and sometimes they even change within the same engine family. So you gotta, uh, like for instance, the 302 Windsor, yeah, takes two different distributors depending on what you got. So, you know, study a Ford. Uh, that's that's the only thing I can really, advice I can give to you out there. Uh, in the meantime, they're a lot of fun. Uh, in my, like I said, in my opinion, uh, I work on them all. I love them all. Uh, Fords happen to be my favorite challenge. Uh, if I just want to build something quick on a budget that is guaranteed to work, I, I choose a Chevy because my wallet will allow me to do more with a Chevy. Uh, Mopar, <laughs> where I live, Mopar is so rare that it's beyond my price range. Uh, so you, very rarely will you see a Mopar here. I do have one and I will be doing it, but yeah, Mopars, I notice that every time uh, we get a lot of people from out of state to move here and I can tell the ones from out of state because the first thing they ask is where's all the Mopar? <laughs> it ain't here. I'm sorry. They're, they're rare and when you do find them people want a lot of money for them. Uh, a good friend of mine moved here from Alabama and he said well, holy cow I thought Mopar was expensive in Alabama until I got here. Exactly. It's yeah. Anyway, that's my tidbits on it. If you're looking to get into Ford, uh, prepare for the prepare for the cost increase and uh, prepare for the challenges that there is going to bring you. And once you conquer them, it, it'll be that much more rewarding. Fords are fun because they'll challenge you every step of the way. So, in the meantime, I'm going to keep slugging on this old Mercury and do something more than just talk about an oil change and the funds of hot rodding. So, in the meantime, get out there and uh, get some metal hot, and we'll catch you on the next one.